Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's silly season. It is silly season. It's the most exciting time to be a Carlton supporter because for the next couple of months, it's really all about building hope and uh, creating fantasies in your mind as to what's going to work and, and why we're going to win the flag next year. And a part of the Blue Broad YouTube channel and a big part of the Blue Broad YouTube channel is the list management discussion at the end of the year. And um, I, I couldn't do this with anybody else, anybody else. Pom, got your back, got the jacket on. You know that we're talking off season when the jacket comes on. That's um, it. I'm excited, mate. This is this. Is, I mean, no pressure on you. You just you've had it right every year, and you've you've spoken about players who we've ended up drafting and, and whatnot. But um, I am going to put the pressure on you because we are the Carlton Football Club, and we're under pressure. Um, give me a bit of an overview of where we're at, and and you know, I guess this is your time to speak. Yeah, well, I mean, we've had success. So, I mean, this is what we've got at the moment. So, as we stand today, 28th of September, we've got 6, 25 and 61 of the National Draft. With Father Sons, with NGAs, things like that, you'd expect these picks to go back maybe two places, particularly six will become eight. But that's what we've got. We've only got three picks in the National Draft this year. And obviously, there's going to be a bit of a workaround because there's a lot of them that are meant to be tied up in deals. So what you'd say is what we're looking at on, out of this is we're looking to gain probably some tackle pressure in the midfield. We're probably looking for another classy midfielder. That has been the talk. You'd probably have your eye on a key defender. Jones isn't getting any younger, so they'll probably be looking. Uh, they've got two or three years there with Jonesy. Let's try and find a project today that we can bide some time and get ready for 2024, 2023. And probably there, they're looking as well at some crafty, small players. They seem to be the niche. When you've got 25 and over, that's particularly where these players come from as well. Your, your small, crafty forwards, your small, crafty defenders, and obviously your wingman, which is a problem position for Carlton. Mm. Yeah, yeah. The, the thing about the contest, I mean, now that we have a coach and a philosophy, we, we can then sort of talk a little bit about what players do we have to fit that philosophy as opposed to trying to create something that we don't have? Um, I think the defender comment is interesting because, and I don't know what the discussion is on the inside, but I imagine like, what is it about Marchbank? Because he's obviously, you know, I'm sure he's viewed as a premier defender when he's fit. Um, and it's so interesting because you just don't know. There's nothing is certain in the league when people are healthy, let alone coming off, you know, repeated injuries. So, in this case, I'm with you. I mean, I think we definitely need to to have another big key position defender for for when Jones goes. Whether it's for when Jones leaves or retires in you know the next let's say five years within that that time frame, or whether we want to use Jones in a different way, um, I think it's a very important point. I think top teams as well genuinely have their replacement push out. That older player we've seen with Cade Simpson, it kind of forced our hand to go out for Adam Saad. You could see that that was a problem position. There was no one really coming through. They trialled a few players throughout the years. No one quite made the mark. Daisy and Cade left, and obviously they had to go out and acquire that in Adam Saad. And to a lesser extent, I don't think they expected Zach Williams to, to be that player, but he did become that player Mm -hmm. um, through choice. Marchbank, I would say it's negligent, though, of Carlton to view him as the potential replacement because, obviously, his body of work suggests he gets injured. So if I was the list manager, particularly if I was Voss, I'd want us to have that base covered because if Marchbank stays fit and he becomes that key defender, which they've been trialling him as the last two years, brilliant, you're laughing. But if he doesn't, you don't want to be in a situation, Jones is retiring, Where's our key defender coming from? Yep. No, that, that's that's a good point. So what we do is, though, let's look with pick six. Probably the um, first label we'll do with the pick 36. So pick 36, SPS is on his way out. So let's look at what we can acquire. Now, pick 36, I think he's probably about his money. You're probably looking for a second, early third. Based on history, an early third, late second would get it done. West Coast have that. Now, there is talk about Brander. There is talk about Cameron. Few reports circulating this morning from West Coast. They're not too sure if he's actually retiring from elite level football or he's looking for another club. But I think with that, I think Carlton want the commodity over the player. And pick 36 is fair on both parties. We're probably taking a little bit of a hit, but yeah. we are doing it in good faith that if SPS wants to leave, it's probably about his money. And yeah, we may take a knock, 
But 36 gives us some arsenal for him and SPS gets a second bite of the cherry. Mm. I'm still, maybe I'm just living in fantasy land. I'm still holding out hope for a conversation with SPS about like, why are you leaving? And, and what are the real reasons why in a situation like this, it's always better to not have the player leave, right? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, SPS, we've plowed what three or four years of work into him. Um, never quite. I would say he's probably, it's a bit of his fault and a lot of Carlton's fault. Um, it's quite hard to ascertain why it hasn't worked because there's the doggies game for every doggies game though. There is a game where he has not quite done it, but it, it's one of them things. If Vossi can get his arm around him and get him into that, especially the first year when he was playing across half forward, he showed a lot of glimpses that first year. He really did burst into the team. Mm. If he can get that back, we're laughing. But if not, Cowan might have to bite the bullet and do the deal and uh, look for the next ne- next project. So ultimately, one of the first and most important pieces of business is getting him to stay. And if that is not going to eventuate, because he's made it clear, he's, he's, he's gone public with him requesting a trade to West Coast. So we'll, we'll work off the assumption that that's where we're at right now, still with hope that... It doesn't actually happen, but if it if it does happen and we do need it, we do need to part with him. This is the the best situation for us to then move other pieces onwards. Yeah, I think obviously Carlton will be looking for a second. Thirty six is technically a second. It's right at the bottom end. They do own a pick just prior to that. If Carlton can negotiate up to what the twenty seven pick, that would be a huge win for Carlton. But let's base it on realism and realistic that generally players with this body of work, with these issues, because there is a lot of issues with SBS. You've got to look at it from West Coast. They're banking on him, getting back to that doggies-type SPS. The midfielder is wasted two years on the back line. Be a lot down there. There's a lot of investment for them as well, that they're taking a chance as well. We're kind of selling him as is at the moment, which I would say 36. I don't like it, but it probably is about where West Coast are at. Okay. So once this is done, it's just sad to see, but once it's done, and I'm glad you didn't put him in a West Coast Guernsey uh, through the edit. I'm, I'm glad to still see him in a Carlton Guernsey. What happens after here? Well, I mean, then obviously probably the least kept secret in AFL history, isn't it? Adam Chera. There he is. He looks all right, doesn't he, in a blue Guernsey? I've got to say. he's uh, Everybody, he looks, everybody looks all right. Yeah. Uh, even one of my exes would look all right in a Carlton jersey. So, I mean... Let's have a look. So, pick six, right? There's a great discussion, Adam Chera, because he is an out-of-contract player, and we know I am really against this out un- uncontracted player. I hate it. I think it's ridiculous, and I think you're relying on generosity of the trading parties. But let's talk about facts. Pick six probably gets the deal done. He is probably a pick six footballer. You look at the draft, there is players like my favourite, Josh Rochelle. Is Chera better than Rochelle? Yes. At the moment, yes. And I think Carlton are in a window to get into flag territory. So I'm looking at it this way. And this is the way I'm making myself feel happy about pick six. We want to win flags today. We're not looking at 10 years down the track. So Chera is pick six in an open market. I don't like the idea today of throwing in a pick, pick second rounder or anything like that. I think six is bang on the money and value for him. And I think that'll ultimately get the job done. Pick six, Adam Chera comes to us from Fremantle. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, if it's going to be done, I, I, I'm really unsure why there is a suggestion that Frio, yeah, okay, Frio will want more than pick six. Well, we would obviously want more for, for Sam Petrovsky seaton as well. Um, but I think given the uncontracted status, given the dealing in good faith, very much like last year with with Adam Saad, we... we bit the bullet and, and gave up the pick eight and did a bit of a swap afterwards as well. Um, I don't like it either. I, I would hope that we play a bit of hardball, but at the same time, I don't know, maybe it's just good karma um, to do such things, which will not bite us in the ass in another day down the track. I, I don't know, but I, I guess for all intensive purposes, this pick six will maybe slide to pick seven or pick eight. Um, whatever the case may be, whether it's six, seven or eight, get it done. You can be done pretty quickly. I would assume. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at negotiation history, and remember, it is a negotiation. So, I mean, what the media are saying may not be true, but we do know Luke Jackson has been mentioned at Melbourne. So, obviously, they value and they want some value. Now, pick six, 
gets them some A-grade talent already. And Fremantle are probably in a better position. They're not knocking down the Premiership window at the moment. They, they know they're in a process. Probably their last year of development and then next year they'll push. So I think it's a fair for both parties. But I also think as well, top teams historically just get the deal done when they've identified talent. You look at your Manchester United, you look at your Man Cities in soccer, you look at your early door Hawthorne, early door Richmond, when they acquire and they identify something, they genuinely get the job done. So this is the kind of bold thing flag winning sides do. And Adam Chera for pick six in two years, when he's got a not when he's got the best and fairest on his on his neck, he's won a flag and he's won best on ground. It probably is the best pick six ever. So yeah. Chair has got all the acquisitions for a talented footballer. He's good in the contest, plays out wide as well, which is, again, a problem position. He does float on that wing area. And top teams now are heavily rotating in that triangle off half-back on the ball and the wing. So he suits the modern style of play. So if Carlton can get the job done, pick six, you'd probably be happy with it in a couple of years' time. He, I'm not going to lie. He does look like a Carlton player, and he does look like someone that would wear the number three. Well, he's, he's Italian, isn't he, for a start? So that suits the bill. We haven't had a good Italian boy for a wee while. Um, he's classy, he's young, and it does salivate thinking that Cripper isn't old either. So you've potentially got Cripper, Walsh and Chera as your trio for the next five to six years, which is really exciting. And I do think in a year's time, that stands up to your Oliver, your Trackers, that is, you know, them kind of ilk players. They are brand names and it is a star-studded midfield. So, exciting times. Pick six probably gets the job done. I think that's the other point as well. Now, with Samo, yes, the the the, the intention when drafted was to be forward, mid or mid-forward. We'll, we'll say forward, mid for whatever, what we're talking about right now. Um, when you look at the grand final in 2021, you look at the depth throughout both midfields and you look at the star power throughout both midfields and... When you look at us, you know, before this off-season beginning, you know, you look at our midfield and you look at the first three or four names. Walsh comfortably sits amongst the best in the competition. Cripps does as well. It's really that third, fourth, fifth and sixth because really we have had a, a rotating door. And is that because we wanted to do that or is that really because no one really emerged? And I'm with you in that Chera as a third string midfielder in the mix and, and whether Williams actually becomes a midfielder or not, I'm not sure what... Michael Voss will do with him. Um, I definitely feel a lot more comfortable knowing that Chera can slot into that that slot and and impact consistently. With whereas whereas with Samo, when he the reality is we we mustn't forget when he was in the midfield, it was still always spurts and patches, and uh, we re really do need more consistency. Yeah, and you think about it, Williams and Chera, they can rotate off the halfback, rotate out wide and rotate on the ball. It mirrors your Melbourne and your doggies who heavily rotate that. That's one thing when you look through the numbers last year at Carlton, it was almost the same people around the stoppages all the time. The top teams rotate that, create mismatches, give the opposition something to think about. And Chera is very talented with ball in hand. There is no mm -hmm. getting away from it. And probably, you could argue, he's only going to get better. The hard work's been done for us. He's been blooded. And if you basically look at this, the way I'm trying to sell this to myself is SPS or Chera, you would take Chera every day of the week. So he is mm -hmm. really going to be where we want SPS to be today. And he is mm -hmm. a very good footballer. So take the uncontracted out of it. That's what I'm doing now. Pick six is worth it. Let's just pretend he's a three-year player and he's not out of contract. And then it makes it better. <laughs> otherwise you do your head in yeah otherwise you go into pom north territory and we're trying to rip them off but it's not <laughs> going to happen i don't think we're going to rip them off pick six i think is fair with all things considered okay so we lose samo we lose pick six we gain pick 36 and we gain adam chera so far yeah and then what we're doing is we're going to play a little bit of pom bingo so I'm proposing we we throw in a future second and that 36 and we go and see Brisbane. Now, Brisbane have got some very talented academy players. Obviously, the new rules in the AFL, you can't match academy bids inside the early figures. So obviously, Brisbane will have an eye on that. Now, Brisbane have two picks in the top t in 20. And obviously, they'll be looking to acquire talent. Brisbane have a method, and that is acquiring talent in the later rounds. And that's what they do. They live off their academy. 
And we get pick 18. Now, pick 18 is an exciting pick. There is a lot of top talent in the top 20. And Carlton, I reckon this is a fair deal for both parties. It gives Brisbane as well. I think this is the last year our future picks have value. Because if Carlton suddenly get in the eight, I think at the moment list managers will be like, well, we've heard this before, Carlton are in the eight, but they finished 13th again. So this potentially is a top six pick in the second round for us. And mm. it's a good little selling point. So this is the last year I'd say a future second could be a little carrot dangler. I like it to get into the top 20. Yeah, and it gives us options. And then, obviously, the next best keeps kept secret. And this guy's looking really good in a navy blue jersey, doesn't he? George Hewitt. Now, we talked at the start of the program. We need a bit of intensity in the midfield. This guy is that. He is the barometer of pressure. You look at what he's done at Sydney. He is best 22. Sydney have tried to keep him. Hewitt's agent has come out and said he wants longevity and financial security. Carlton have gone with a four-year Deal, Kane Corns hates it. Kane Corns yesterday said one of the most funniest things I've heard and said that he's not best 22, but he has started every available game in the midfield he's been available for in the back end of the year, mm. and their numbers have been frightening. Hewitt is a tackle machine. He is a huge upgrade on Ed Kernel as well because he is a very good ball user, and he's going to cost us just the salary. So he comes in prime age profile as well, prime age profile. Mm. No, that is big. Fills a need, and, and obviously we're not losing as much capital when it comes to draft. Yeah, and he's a, he's a supreme football. You've only got a look. He had double-figure tackles in the prelim final. In the elimination final, he was frightening in that. He brings that metric, an exceptional tagger in the Matt DeBoer mode, but he also plays defensive as a midfielder, so he allows his skilled players to do the work. So uh, looking at Parker and Heaney, the things he does to create space from them for Sydney, that is now going to be Sam Walsh and Adam Chera. So mm. these are the guys you want with the ball in a bit of space in contests. And Hewitt provides that. Great footballer. I love him. Yeah. Great Mo as well. Very good Mo. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited for this this one. A workhorse, an actual, you know, soldier. Oh, yeah. And we were saying, where's the next Ed Kerno coming from? You imagine that a lot of these teams as well play two bigger bodies. You look at uh, Melbourne, Neil Bullen has been floating through there as the ox with Viney. We now have Stocker and Hewitt. That is exciting because these are very Voss type players as well. They're brute yeah. strength, physical beasts. And it frees Cripper up as well. Cripper's no longer going to have to use his back to carry the team. Hewitt's there to help him out. That's exciting. That's exciting. Exciting times. So then we head to the draft. So we've got a few picks. So pick 18, Josh Goater is a guy that is slowly sliding. Looking at the draft boards at the moment, they've got him about 16 to 22. Now, Josh Goater is Mr. Versatility. Carlton like versatile. He's played across half-back, he's played on the ball, he's played on the wing, and he slots across half-forward. He is a supreme talent, a very talented footballer, and he is explosive in the stoppages. He's got a great turn of pace. He suits the Carlton philosophy, two-way running, exceptional clean hands. He's a guy that, if he's around that 18 mark, you bite the bullet. And I think he may just slide. He will be one of them guys that slides because he's not quite. You don't know what his best position is, and that's a great position to be. He's obviously Victorian as well. So we, these are tards with the haven't played much football brush. So this is the guy there that I think Carlton will have a sniff at if he's at pick 18. Yeah, well, not only Carlton. I think the modern game, as we move more and more into you know the future, the versatility is important. The doggies are showing that. The D's are show definitely showing that. Um, you know, Richmond are showing that. These are the teams that have really been there over the last few years. So, where do you think his best position is, or is that is that really the unknown? I see him a little bit like Lockie Whitfield, and you know, literally give him three positions, play him where you need him, use him as that rotation model. Now, Whitfield's. It flips the bar, really, of that rotation player because he is a key player wherever he plays across the line. And right. this is what Gota would give us. So Gota, he can come on, he can play on the wing, real good kick, good IQ, which would then mean that you could maybe flip Zach Williams back to halfback or you can put Zach Williams on the ball and this guy floats. And if you keep them rotations, top teams rotate heavily. But I do see him as a midfielder, first and foremost, and I think he's I think he is what SPS wanted to be. 
And it gives us that second chance now of re reapplying that in a good structured system. But Josh Gower is a phenomenal player, phenomenal mm -hmm. player. And I think he will be one of them players when he goes late teens, when you redo the draft in five years' time, he'll be a top 10. Interesting. That's exciting. All right, there's, a, there's definitely a name to look out for. And then the other guy I've been fairly consistent with, Big Rhett Bazza, 25 pick. And he's a guy that suffered a few injuries um, early doors this year, but he is primed and ready to go. He is an absolute jet in every sense of the word. He's the modern-day key position player who looks to attack the ball hard. He's got the ability as well to intercept. He's got terrifying ability in the air. He is a real strong one-on-one. -on -one. He's the modern-day Liam Jones. He really is the modern-day Liam Jones. If you look at Liam Jones as the prototype, this guy is the next in line. He also has the ability as well. He does slot across forward as well. He has been a swingman in the under-19s this year as well. So you've got that option as well that Carlton can really use him where they need him. But I do see him as a tall back, and I do think he is... If I was Carlton, there's him, um, there's Lisa as well, another Sudanese footballer who's real phenomenal, who's coming late, a bit mature age. But I think Rep Bazo for me, with his elite kicking, just trumps it. 25 is primed to go, primed to go. So it's the injuries that have been the reason for him sliding? Yeah, he's, he's been in and out of injuries, but I mean, he has had a clean bill, bill of health towards the end of this year. He is a phenomenal footballer, though. He's got all the things, intercept marking, the IQ, reads it in the air, decent on the deck. He's what Cowton would be looking at. Okay. Would definitely be looking at if you were replacing Liam Jones, so you're not changing your structure too much, and he slots in. And I think he'd be ready to go, in my opinion, very early doors if you want to play him as the third mm. down the back. So he's a real talented footballer and something that I hope, if we've got that 25, and he's there. This is where you jump the, you bite the bullet, and you take him. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Anything else after that? Well, then we're at pick sixty-one now. Father and son time. Big Charlie. We know his dad Andrew. We know he's got his sister on the AFLW books, and he's been really good of late as well. Charlie He's starting to play in the midfield. He's really, really starting to show things as well, which is really important for Carlton. He's starting to show it. He's averaging over 24 touches in juniors and he's played a bit across half forward, but he's now, I mean, half back and he's now living on the ball and on the wing. And he had a great matchup this year against Ben Hobbs, who's a top 10 pick, where he did actually win the majority of the contest. So he's got his dad's real grit and determination. He's a real Voss footballer because you can see the way he plays. He hates losing, hates coming second in the contest. So he's got a real high ceiling. He's someone that we've got enough position now to lean on and let him get better. So he's he's someone that I would be say is worthy of a two-year contract on the senior list as a father-son. Real top talent and potentially could be a lot higher given given good recruitment and good 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 development of him. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of a, another piece you add to the next generation. You know, the, the that Jack Carroll, Corey Durden, Brody Camp mix of players you know in that in maybe five or six or seven years from now really emerge so this is a guy that's getting better as he's getting a little bit more older yeah he was eligible for the draft last year he chose not to enter it took another year in the juniors which shows maturity i think shows real maturity beyond the years especially with carlton because we love picking up a father and son so chances are we would have probably burnt a pick and got him Shows maturity for me, and he has got exceptionally better this year. He's a player that I've, we've talked about last year in last year's draft class as well as a potential ceiling-type player. And again, I think he can be another ceiling-type player this year, really with the right development. I think when you've got someone like um, Voss, who has standards, this is the kind of kid that's going to benefit from that. Um, he's a tackle machine as well, just under five tackles in the midfield and playing on the wing. It's a real good little player that I think Voss would like to have because I think Voss could teach him a lot, particularly Luke Power as well. Two guys that really hated being second best. So mm -hmm. he's in the right area. And I think he could surprise us. Could surprise us, old Charlie. Yeah, I'm with that. I'm with that. And then we'll go to the rookie. And I've talked about this guy now for two years. Big yeah. Dominic Akui. This guy is an athletic beast. Like this guy, I would say he's top five in the draft for athleticism like for his size. The kid is 
special. He's got something. He's he's Mad Jack Daw. He's a Leah Leah, that type of player. Think of that. And think of how well two clubs did harnessing them skills because he's got the raw skills. He's just very raw. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to be a kid that would develop very well as a key defender down back with the ability to go through the ruck. And that's what he's doing. And I think he's a potential modern day ruckman. Okay. So he can play in defence and in the ruck. That's very yeah, so good. At the moment, they're playing him as a key intercept marker down the back, and he's floating through the ruck, and he's, his athleticism in the ruck is scary good. Like, his vertical leap is frightening. So he is someone that I think, working with Matty Cruiser and whoever else Carlton bring in, in the VFL, him going up against Murkoff, Pitonet, and TDK, they're real good Ruckman to, as a young person to go up because you've got the big body of Pitonet, you've got the athleticism of TDK, and then you've just got the brute height of Murkoff. So it's a real good development situation for Carlton to take upon. And this kid has got something. He's super quick as well for his size. He's a kind of kid that if Carlton get him with a Ruck, he's been in the NGA, so he knows the system as well, which is super important. He is really, really exciting. And he's in Ruckcraft in two years from me watching him is supreme from two years ago. So he's got a brain in there as well. I'm excited about this kid, and I am really hope we do take him in on the list. Okay. So I can see, now this photo of him, he's not edited. So what is the connection to Carlton? So he's in our NGA Academy, um, okay. Northern Knights. So we do get first sniff at them. And he's been there for two years now, the NGA. So Luke Power will be familiar with him. Tobin will be familiar with him. He's been around that system. And he gets the club. So he's, he's he's kind of, we always ask, where's our NGA coming from? This could be it. This could be that moment. And we've seen NGAs have so much success in the AFL because they know the system first and foremost. So trained this year. He actually trained with Josh Rochelle, ironically. Carlton invited him to a training session. So we can't get Rochelle. Let's get my other boy. Now, D Big Dom, honestly, you'll fall in love with him as well. He plays that. Very similar to, you know, your Aaliyah Aaliyah, your Mad Jack Daw. Got that big smile on his face, really enjoys it. Real people person. And I think he'll grow very quickly at Carlton because seeing his development in two years, it's been exceptional, really. He's really come from a, a, a real low base and he's learned and learned and learned. And I think now's the time we take an NGA and get excited because this kid really could make it. I'm excited. Have we ever had an, uh, an academy player come to the club yet? Have we have we picked one up? We haven't taken one, no. This would be our first proper NGA. We have obviously taken father, sons and stuff like that, but this would be our first NGA recruit as yeah. we know it in the new form with the academies and stuff. So exciting times. I like it. I like it. And, and that's all for the moves for now? Yeah, that's all the moves. And then obviously as we get through the trade period, and we get our picks sorted. You'll have the Poms five for each pick where we get excited. And I'll tell you once, the next great white hope. But that's roughly just a nice little boundary there to see of what Carlton could do with the picks, with the rumours as they are at the moment. No, I like it. I like it, Pom. Um, for you guys in the audience watching, let us know if you have any other thoughts on strategy or any other targets or any other ways to get the targets. I think this is really just the start of a discussion and a, and a skeleton. And then I guess this will evolve, as you said, as we know which picks we get. Obviously, if Samo ends up staying, well, then we have more capital to play with. Uh, we might go after somebody else. I know that there are so many names that are, that are linked with us at the moment in the most you know, minute of ways. So let us know in the comments below what you think and we'll chat about it there. <laughs>